Hi there, Federico from Jolink here and this is my second attempt at uh, recording this video because the first one didn't hit record on the recorder. Thumbs up for me. And today we are talking about uh, Goblet. It's this guy here. hope that you can see it, this module here. And Goblet is a optocoupler filter. Mm. Why? What does, it, what does this mean? From the design perspective, while you are making a filter, you have to use VCA, usually, for um, kind of dealing with the incoming signal and uh, messing up with its feedback chain. So just to take it to the, to the basic. And um, in Goblet, I decided not to use VCA, that are linear, but to use uh, uh, optocouplers that are logarithmic and unprecise and different from each other. So this means that uh, Goblet has a unique characteristic of um, and character since uh, these discrepancies in the um, feedback chain create um, some kind of uh, interruption in the frequency and in the resonance. And this makes it uh, kind of self-pingable, let's call it this way, and really heavy and acid where, wh when we are using the um, notch output. So let's go in detail with uh, the controls. We have uh, this section here, this knob and this uh, fader are the um, frequency control and the same apply for the resonance controls. The input comes in from this jack and then flows. Um, then the control are kind of two stepped. So we have a first step that is the um, attenuation. Usually the attenuation in a filter are on the back of the module, but uh, with goblet since um, the reason is its character, I decided to have them on, on the module itself, on the panel. So you can choose for each one of the incoming signal, the level of the um, the range of the fader itself. So the first the attenuation regulates the amount of uh, control that we that the fader we have. So uh, at the end we have a kind of a full range control zone also on the feathers. So this applies for the frequency and the resonance. And this potentiometer he here is the feedback control and as you can see it's kind of important for the final shaping uh, sound of the module. And then we have of course, uh, these two that are touch controls and a distortion button that is from, from made with a capacitor. And so it takes a few seconds to charge and we are going to hear it. It's kind of interesting. Um, about the jacks, we have a CV for the frequency, CV for the resonance, uh, a gate, kind, a kind of a gate input to clock, to clock it. We're going to hear that later. And low pass output, notch output and input. The low pass is really it's kind of softer compared to the notch output. So let's start with a basic wave from this even VCO from Bifaco. Let's use a sawtooth. Start with sawtooth. Yeah, so I don't want to destroy it. Take it from the notch output. I want to destroy you here. So is it okay for you? Maybe a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. No, I was worried that maybe the sound was coming in back into the recorder, but it's not so. Let's go. So we, at first, where we are dealing with a signal, we will, we would like to, to deal in with it using the attenuation the attenuators on the panel. So let's start tweaking the at frequency attenuator until we hear the resonance kicks in. Okay. Now let's set the resonance. I like kind of, I like it when it's kind of heavy. And now we have full range controls on the feathers. So as you can see, not yet with the frequency. So we have to adjust it a little bit more. Okay. Do it more.
okay, that's how I like my frequency response, but you can choose whatever you prefer since it's uh, completely configurable with the attenuation on the panel. Now, let's uh, set up the resonance. This quirkiness is due to the optocoupler, to the optocoupler's non-linearity, and that's what makes Goblet uh, um, kind of a unique design in this sense. Okay, now let's try with a basic sine wave. See the touch controls are kind of really sensitive. Okay, let's try the CV inputs. As you can see, as you're gonna see, they are quite responsive. So a triangle, wave, LFO from GitGad. The attenuation then works also as an attenuator for the CV input. Okay, also on the resonance, triangle wave. Okay, and this was the resonance V input. Now let's go to. I'll demonstrate you also the gate clock input. This, this one is the middle. Let's use a square wave to better clock it. create this kind of blip blopping sound and this is done just by goblet itself so we are not modulating at all our even vco but let's try to give it give him some fm source from tabor
Yeah. And this is a goblet notch output. So now let's do a quick demo on the low pass output. It's kind of softer, can be used also in maybe a wider range of situation. Again, let's try not to kill your, your drums. Let's take out all the modulations. Combine it with also the notch output. Now I'm curious what happens if I take the transient out of the single and I plug it into here. Yeah, actually the first time that I'm doing this. And I let me know if you like also this approach where we are just chilling and trying to uh, understand the modules a little bit. And I'm talking also to you about some design choices and other things. Please let me know. Really like this transient output into the the gating of goblet. Okay, now I have another patch that I would like to make is to feed directly Tabor instead of the uh, even with you. Without modulations. Without CV input. This guy, this goblet, optocoupler filter for Aerolac, 
it's 8 HP and yeah, I think that we pretty much covered its functions and talk a little bit about the features. So let me know if you like the sound that we made today and if you have any ideas or any patch ideas that you would like me to try out for the next video. And yeah, see you on the next one that is going to be about Get Wrecked. Bye. Ciao, guys.